point. Hi everyone, I'm here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good day. It has been pouring the rain here all day and windy, and then the sun comes back out. Then it rains again, and then the sun's back out again now. I told you there's going to be a rainbow out there somewhere. Okay, so I got the circle of kindness, and I got this stuff I want to read to you guys first before we get started. Comfort is never far. We all need a little extra strength, encouragement, and reassurance sometimes. And don't worry, it will come. Life has a way of sending us angels when we need them most. And they are almost here. In the meantime, look past today and know that easier times are on the way. Remember guys, a storm don't last forever. It will be sunny again. It won't last forever. You gotta have, you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. This is the right moment. We may tell ourselves the moment has passed or the moment will come, but the best time to start making your dreams happen is always now. Today, you can take that important first step towards your wonderful future. Whether it's a baby step or big and bold, it doesn't matter. They all count, just like you do, each and every single one of you. You all count, and you all matter to God. You are His children. You know, when you're, if you have kids or nieces or nephews, and they do something bad, you don't get mad at them or stay mad at them. You know, you just didn't like their behavior. You still love them. Okay. Solutions are always more plentiful than problems. You make life good. You do for someone. You might not think so, but you do. You could have gave somebody a compliment or was nice to them just one time and never see them again. And that comment or whatever meant so much to them that they made changes in their life and are doing wonderful now. They may have been thinking about committing suicide that day. You just never know. Joy has a GPS. It can find you anywhere. A wish and plan equals a dream. Never stop dreaming. Act on those good dreams. You add beauty to every day. Positivity has more power than you think. Give your day an instant upgrade. Smile. This right here, positivity has more power than you think. People would rather hang around and talk to someone that has a positive attitude than someone who is, has a negative attitude and is just moping around and complaining all the time. You know about my dry mouth. I hate it. Okay, so now I'll read the circle of kindness and then we'll get started with the Bible study. This one is by Valerie from California. A kind deed went full circle. You ever heard of what goes around comes around? And karma and everything, it's so true. It, it may be many, many years, but it always comes back. It always comes full circle. And karma. We'll see. It may take years, but like somebody does something horrible to you, and they may have a perfect life for years. And then one year, you know, they come crashing down. You know, it goes full circle. 
I was at a friend's house recently. Before I left, she hefted a box of canned cat food into my car. My cats don't like this flavor, she explained. She was so kind to offer it to me. Then while driving home, I noticed a homeless man at a shopping center holding a cardboard sign. Incredibly, the sign read, All I need is cat food. See how God works? I can tell you some stories. I drove up to him and unloaded the box. It was such an amazing circle of kindness. I smiled to myself all the way home. It's always a great feeling to experience a kind deed, whether you are the receiver or the giver. To me, it makes me more happy to give somebody something than me get something because, you know, I don't really care about material things. And it makes me so much more happier to give somebody something. I mean, it really truly does. I'm not just saying that. It really does to me. Some people like getting stuff. Me, I'd rather just make somebody happy. That's all. If I can teach one person and turn someone's life to the Lord, So I, that's all I want to do before I die. Even if it's just that one person. This one is by Loretta from New Jersey. My heart filled with happiness. During the pandemic, I began to walk every morning. I found a home with a statue of the Virgin Mary on the lawn that was exactly one mile from my house. Each day, I walked to the statue, said a prayer, then turned back home. One day, there was a for sale sign on the lawn. The owner was outside. I told her how much I loved her statue and how it had gotten me through my pandemic walks and was an inspiration. The next day, I put a book about Mary in her mailbox. My address was in the book but I told her to feel free to keep it. Two days later, the house was empty and the statue was gone. My heart sank. The next day, the statue of Mary was at my garage door. The attached note said, my new condo doesn't allow lawn ornaments. It was a blessing to meet you and to find a home for my statue. My heart filled with happiness. I got started crying and losing it on that one. I'm really emotional today for some reason. And the last one is by Sherry Mahorder from Augusta, Georgia. She says, He came out of his way for us. My husband and I were on our first trip to New York City from Georgia. We were a little apprehensive because of all the crime you hear about there. We took a taxi from the airport to our hotel. As we got out, I heard a thump like I had dropped something. We looked around and didn't see anything. But when we got into our room, I realized I didn't have my cell phone. All of our reservations were in emails, only accessible through my phone. I started calling my phone. Finally, the taxi driver answered. When I explained, he offered to bring the phone to me after his ship. Our worries about New York City were unfounded. Everyone was extremely nice. I've come across that as well. People have told me, you know, how mean somebody is, how awful. And then I was scared, terrified to go there. You know, to be around, to talk to them because they said awful things. And when I was around that person, they were as nice as could be. They were not mean at all. That's why you can't take what uh, you hear with a grain of salt. You need to take it with a grain of salt because you don't know unless you, you know, know it yourself. 
with someone you trust or you see them yourself. I hope my battery holds out nice because for some reason the battery charger has stopped working for some reason. So apparently I'm going to have to try to look one up and find one and I hope it's not that expensive. The devil keeps trying to stop us from, you know, doing the videos. <laughs> My rose petals are falling out, sorry. Okay, let's see here what we'll be reading today. Alright. So we will be reading... Bible verse, Matthew 5.15 nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. All right. And that was, of course, Jesus speaking. Okay, today, tonight's devotion is by Isabella Campolotaro. That was a hard one. Why do people always have hard names to speak? have names like that that are hard to say in these books and doctors you know when you go to a doctor their names like <laughs> like I can never pronounce that right this like Sherm's kidney doctor she's got a long last name that like how do you pronounce that so everybody just calls her Dr. Emily because <laughs> her first name's Emily all right where did I go it says Matthew 5 okay my baby's breath's falling out now. Okay. The Beautitudes. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, Jesus did, and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill could not be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great 
in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Because you know how the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were. They really, they weren't about uh, really preaching the right thing. They wanted to give big, long speeches so people would think they're, you know, wise and let everybody, you know, worship them. They wanted people to do stuff, making laws, but they themselves did not follow the laws. They were just making it harder on the people. And they wanted people to pay attention to them and listen to them. They want to be like gods on earth for the people. So if you're not better than that, as Jesus is saying, certainly you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Murder. You have heard that it was said to people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Adultery. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of a body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Divorce. It has been said, Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, adultery, causes her to become an adulteress, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Oaths. Again, you have heard that it was said to people of long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your eyes be yes, and your yours and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one, which is Satan. I hate having to do that this way, I'm sorry. An eye for an eye. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But, I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, 
Go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You know why? Because remember, God said, or Jesus said, the least you do for your fellow person, your fellow man, woman, child, what you do for the least of these, you are doing to me. And same way if you do something good to someone. And if someone does something bad to you and you still, like what Jesus said, you know, don't fight them back or anything. That's just even more better for you. Love your enemies. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers that are, or sorry, if you only greet your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that was all of Matthew 5. All right. And of course, in chapter 6, it goes on about giving to the needy, prayer, fasting, treasures in heaven, do not worry, and then it just, you know, keeps on going from there. Okay, so let's get to our devotion by Isabella. Isabella says, in previous editions of Mornings with Jesus, which is this book, I shared about my crippling stage fright and fear of public speaking, both of which have been so intense that on occasion they have prevented me from serving God in a full capacity. My preoccupation with avoiding the spotlight became a liability in my service to God. I wanted to avoid facing criticism, exposing my faith-filled beliefs, appearing prideful, and in general, receiving any kind of judgment or disapproval from fellow believers or otherwise. Sometimes I mistook my behavior for humility rather than plain old fear. Still, Jesus often prodded me toward and prodded me toward humility rather than the plain old fear. It took a lot of prayer and seeking to help me understand that my focus was misplaced. None of this was about me. It was all about Jesus. When I gave my life to Christ, all that I am, His to use as He sees fit. I was withholding what was rightfully His. Jesus wants His light to shine through me. I'm not supposed to hide my gifts and talents. He wants me to daily hand my life back over to Him and live through Him. And he especially wants me to hand over my fears. Today I share openly as a speaker and writer. My audiences tell me they find my vulnerability most helpful. Only Jesus can transform our greatest fears into our most powerful ministry. Amen. And Isabella's homework for you guys tonight is ask Jesus to liberate you from self-consciousness in any form so his light can shine brightly through you. Amen. Amen, guys. Let's see here. You know, uh, if you're a Christian, and you go out and 
treat people horrible. You're great on Sunday when you're in church and everybody loves you and everything. But then the whole rest of the week, you're a really evil person. You judge people. Like if somebody tried to be your friend or come to your church, you're like, we don't have your kind here. Or you can't dress like that here. And then on Sunday, they're perfect again and everybody thinks they're wonderful. You cannot act like that to anybody and claim to be a Christian because you're not a Christian if you act that way. We're supposed to be like Jesus, not Satan. You can't just be good on Sunday when you're in church and then, you know, that's it. You can act the way you want the rest of the week. It don't work that way. You didn't see Jesus treat anybody that way. And we're, as we are Christians, we are supposed to be like Jesus in our actions and our fruit. Because as someone who doesn't know God, and they're like, oh, you know, they're thinking about maybe I'll try the church this weekend. And then you see somebody you know that's a Christian being horrible to people. They might, they might think they're hypocrites. Why go to church? Because they're hypocrites. I see how they treat people. You know, Christians are that way. I don't want to be one. And if you lose bringing a soul to Jesus, that won't be good. Because you're not supposed to act that way anyway. None of us are. Everybody pick your animal. Sure, sure. Dog. Okay. Sherman Jesus is a dog. Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It goes on from there, but it don't say that in here. Okay, and the devotion is by Terry Clifton. Terry Clifton. And it's called The Best Laid Plan. Last spring was the first time we put up a hummingbird feeder. It hung from the pergola in our backyard. I have no idea what that is. Do you guys know what a pergola is? Which sat next to the window in our living room. By late summer, we'd had no patrons. I had pretty much given up until I spotted one hovering. Yeah, was a patron's. We saw one hovering, red-throated hummingbird looking through the window. Well, better late than never, I thought. I named him Tardy. <laughs> because he was nice. She named him Tardy. So it's hummingbirds, guys. He showed up every day through the summer, often propped on a thin branch of our newly planted trees. Just as I fell into a reliable routine and grew fond of him, he was gone. I was sad that tardy season with us was over. I prayed that he would be safe in his migration south. I didn't even know how many birds did that, did you? Migrated like other birds. This spring, I vowed I would increase our hummingbird guest registry. I put up three feeders and waited no hummingbirds. In midsummer, I finally spotted one gray, red, bibbed hummingbird. His luminous blue wings landed him on a branch of a sapling tree that had to be tardy. Welcome back, I said. Why didn't you bring any friends? The hummingbird population was not cooperating with my scheme to turn our backyard into a hummingbird bed and breakfast. I suddenly felt a bit foolish and mentally apologized to Tardy. Hadn't I prayed for his safe travels last year and he'd flown away? Here I was looking at a living example of the miracle of God's migration plan and all I could do was complain that my human scheme didn't work. How often in the past had I focused on the unfulfilled plan? 
and then later only in grudge.